news nug update hi and hello everyone i am your host coral and i have a hefty nug of sativa here with me we are going to bring you four cannabis related news stories you can always head over to instagram twitter or facebook.com news nug and catch up during the week with how people are staying high around the world and what's going on in the cannabis business and community the four stories I'm bringing to you for this week were user submitted. So I'm always taking submissions of what's going on local to you. You can hit me up via email, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, all those things I mentioned. And the first story this week is coming out of Virginia in which the House of Representatives has allowed for marijuana oils for epilepsy. It's a very, very narrow bill that was passed and it's only allowing two oils derived from cannabis. It is not a gate opening to medical marijuana for all types of patients. It's very specific to epilepsy patients. And some of the representatives seem very, very proud of themselves for having such a narrow law. It's something that I think will need to be brought in to better reach all patients that can benefit from cannabis, not just of a specific illness, illness or ailment, but it's definitely a step in the right direction that Virginia is having the conversation that it was also a unanimous vote to allow the access to two cannabis derived oils and the two people that did oppose the bill publicly decided to abstain from voting rather than vote against it so it's definitely a sign of the times that people would rather be seen voting for medical marijuana even if it's just a small very very specific allowance of those oils they don't even want to be seen voting against it at this point because it's a losing battle to be against medical marijuana and they'd rather just abstain from voting altogether and let the change take place. So it's kind of bad news in the law that actually passed because it's not a lot of medical marijuana access for Virginia. There's still a lot of work to do, but it is really, really good news that the conversation was had and that a unanimous vote did take place and allow for access to two oils derived from cannabis for epileptic patients in Virginia. The next story is about medical marijuana and recreational. It can be very hard to differentiate between the two. I heard the ever eloquent Steve D'Angelo speaking today, and he was further clarifying the idea of wellness versus medical or recreational. But when it comes to tax paying and the laws that are already in place, we do have a very clear medical access point and recreational access point in two different states, Colorado and Washington. This article, the second one of the NewsNeg recap, was looking at Colorado's medical and recreational pot sales and the revenue that was collected in 2014. It found around $76 million was collected total from recreational and medical access to cannabis in tax revenue for the state. In fact, it was so much money in the state, I think on the, the recreational side, that they actually have had to issue in the past refunds for citizens of Colorado. It's still something they're figuring out what they're going to do in Colorado with the tax money right now. It was supposed to be all earmarked for schools and to help pay for implementing legalizing cannabis, but there's actually such an abundance of tax money that's come in that now they're trying to figure out what the hell do we do with all this money? And if you live anywhere other than Colorado, you know that an abundance of tax money is a rarity. Colorado is doing something right by having cannabis legally available, having it taxed, and having that money be available for the people to use for things that they voted they want it to use they want to use it for. It's really, really interesting. And combining those two industries, medical and recreational, when we look at the total sales numbers, the total revenue numbers from cannabis, I think it's important that we look at a combination of recreational and medical. Because all in all, like Steve D'Angelo has said, we are pursuing wellness. We're pursuing health and wellness. And I don't think labeling it as one or the other, medical or recreational, is really demonstrating a clear understanding of how cannabis can benefit your life. So Colorado has two access points in place. Washington is still working out their access points. They do have recreational. They're kind of fading out the medical, and it's not a good thing. But a lot of money is coming into play with the tax revenue that is created in both of those systems. Whew. The next story for this week is an ongoing case I have mentioned I think a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month or two ago, but a federal judge in California is hearing the case of nine men who were charged with illegally growing marijuana 
and she's considering hearing arguments from their defense that the federal government has improperly labeled marijuana all around, that it shouldn't be a Schedule One narcotic, and that the crimes these men are committed, or these men have been accused of committing, are in fact not crimes because the policy and system in itself is unjust. It's a super bold argument from a lawyer. I have not heard of a lawyer just saying it's not a crime at all in the first place, and they, that's why they can't be prosecuted. I've never heard of that happening before. So it's really, really exciting to keep your eye on this case coming out of California. I think when the first time I mentioned it, it was that the lawyers were considering these arguments and maybe going to use this tactic, and now the judge has decided to allow these arguments. She's going to hear them out. She's going to hear what they have to say, and I think it's within 30 days or so we should have a ruling on whether the judge agrees that the federal listings a schedule one narcotic of cannabis is unjust and not scientifically upheld and doesn't make any sense legally if she listens to that then that wasn't a crime that they were growing cannabis because cannabis isn't a schedule one narcotic and it can just basically lead into a snowball effect for a lot of court systems in place super super interesting case i'm really really curious to see how it plays out and i'm really really just impressed with the boldness of that defense so Way to go, and California, keep on chugging. I really, really want us to see legal access and freedom for the citizens ASAP. The last story I'm bringing to you for this week's News Nug recap is kind of a mixing of social media, which I do full-time, and cannabis, which I love full-time. And this article is about the Apple Apps Store having a ban on marijuana social networking apps, and that ban has been lifted. Woo, it's lifted! Mass Roots is probably the app you've most heard of. There are other marijuana-related social networking apps. Budfolio is one that I've used, but there are a few other. I heard of Hi there. I don't know if you guys have heard of that one. There are a few social networking marijuana apps, and the App Store had banned that feature. They were allowing maps to dispensaries, menus for dispensaries, and possibly reviews of strains, but if you wanted to connect with another patient or enthusiast or cannabis user, they were not allowing that app to have that service in any way. And Masters is actually taken off of the app network or the app store, and they fought back. So this network or this story is a case of good news. That ban went up in smoke, as the headline says, and the App Store is now allowing marijuana social networking to take place again. This is something where I think the will of the people came through loud and strong. You can't just ban social networking around a certain substance, even if that substance is illegal. I disagree with how the Apple Store went about that. I am still super, super curious to find out why Instagram deleted my personal account, which was all weed all the time. There is definitely a lot of censorship still happening in the cannabis industry, and we're not being heard by mainstream broadcasters. Mainstream, the app store is trying to close you down. Instagram's trying to shut you down. Bans will be lifted when people speak out about it. So I'm really, really excited to bring you the News Nug recap every single week. Definitely follow on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and the News Nug video recap will be on newsnug.com once a week. I'm going to be vaporizing some sativa in this sweet little internet collaboration bong. Thank you guys, the people that sent this piece to me. It was a collaboration from a few artists online, Dune Glass, SETX Glass, and Fishman Glass. And I love seeing the internet come together and make something like that. That's super incredible. Let's vaporize some pot. Thanks for watching this news nug update. Stay informed and stay high, world reefers.